in one of the biggest transfer sagas of the summer, Arsenal find themselves in a battle against Pep Guardiola's treble winning City, all for West Ham's in demand Declan Rice. Today we'll find out the latest as we break down all the developments in the deal. We'll also find out if Arsenal are on the verge of signing Jurian Timber, get all the details behind the arrival of Kai Havertz, and find out where Arsenal have overtaken Real Madrid, Barcelona, and Bayern Munich in the transfer market. Yo, what is going on guys? My name is Bows14, welcome back to your boys channel, I hope you guys are doing sensational. Plenty of transfer sagas, so many things have happened. So as per, smash a like on the video if you enjoy, subscribe to the channel if you are new and help your boy on his road to 200,000 subscribers. We're starting off with Arsenal's first summer signing. Mikel Arteta wanted a brand new forward going into this window and he has found his man. Chelsea's German international Kai Havertz is on his way to the Emirates Stadium. Fabrizio Romano has already given us the here we go and now he says that Arsenal's plan for Kai Havertz is confirmed. A medical later this week. The formal contract already sent and being checked then it will be official. A £65 million fee with add-ons confirmed. A long-term deal for Havertz who's set to become the first gunner signing this summer. Arsenal here have been decisive, they have seen an opportunity and they have taken it. According to Kieran Cook, Kai Havertz will wear the number 29. Things are happening in terms of the medical. Here you can see the Arsenal club doctor, Gary O'Driscoll, spotted on his way to a flight to Spain. That is the current location of Kai Havertz, who's currently enjoying his holidays, alongside ex-Chelsea teammate Andreas Christensen and the soon-to-depart Mateo Kovacic. Fabrizio Romano confirms Havertz is having his Arsenal medical in the next hours. The £65 million deal is confirmed. The price tag is hefty, but it's worth breaking it down. As Darren Arsenal confirms, Arsenal will pay £50 million in three instalments for Kai Havertz, plus £15 million in add-ons, taking the total package of £65 million. This is why Arsenal have been so quick in this deal. Chelsea knew that Havertz wanted to leave, and they were willing to accept an offer in very favourable instalments. That still makes him one of Mikel Arteta's most expensive ever signings. There are many Arsenal fans that are very sceptical, but there is one very important detail. As Fabrizio Romano says, Kai Havertz was crucial in transfer talks as he only wanted to join Arsenal. After the club presented their project to him, Mikel Arteta is convinced the player has huge potential and can perform at a top level in the Arsenal system. In Germany, Havertz was seen as a super talent, scoring 17 league goals at 19 years of age. There is a reason why Chelsea spent £90 million on him in the first place, where in his first season he won the Champions League, scoring the winner in the final. Last year, Chelsea finished 12th underperformed. But in terms of Kai Havertz, he had the most Chelsea goals, most shots on target, most chances created, most aerial duels won, most possession won in the final third, most final third passes, most duels won, most flicons and layoffs as well. Havertz played a massive part of Chelsea avoiding relegation. A key area of discussion has been his finishing. Last year Havertz was the highest player in the league in terms of XG underperformance. That being said though, if you look at his overall XG numbers over the entirety of his career, as you can see with the blue line, he's actually overperformed. The reason behind that is his days at Bayer Leverkusen. In the Bundesliga when this guy had confidence, Havertz was a fantastic finisher. Confidence is one of the most underrated aspects in football and when a player has that, it can be a game changer. Standing at 6 foot 3 tall, Havertz will give Arsenal aerial ability, with 10 of his 32 Chelsea goals being via headers. Over the past two seasons, only three players in the Premier League have scored more headed goals than Kai Havertz. We are talking Harry Kane, Erling Haaland and Danny Welbeck. He has the ability to play as a false nine, even potentially out wide. Does he have a future though as a number 8? Well, back in 2021, Havertz said more or less, I am a midfield player, but I like to go in the box. We've even got the athletic reporting. Arsenal and Arteta won over Havertz, with a vision of him playing as a left number 8. Every single year under Mikel Arteta, Arsenal have evolved in some sort of way. Last year, it was the introduction of the inverted fullback. With the departure of Granit Xhaka, there is a space in the Arsenal midfield. Mikel Arteta previously worked alongside Pep Guardiola and their very famous team at Man City had two very attack-minded number eights of Kevin De Bruyne and David Silva. That team went on to get 100 points, dominate the Premier League. If Arsenal can get Declan Rice, here's a stats radar of how a midfield three of Rice, Odegaard and Havertz could look like. Odegaard has the chance creation, Rice has the defensive numbers and the ball progression. And in terms of Kai Havertz, his aerial duels won are very high. It would be a risky move and I still have my own personal doubts. Does Kai Havertz have the defensive ability to play as a number eight, especially in terms of dual winning? But if there is a coach in world football that has the ability to transform players, Mikel Arteta may be that man. As James Olly says, a lot of players talk about improving as a result of Mikel Arteta's coaching and attention to detail. The prime example is the coaching of Granit Xhaka. 
From defensive number six to a box to box midfielder, Mikel Arteta has shown the ability to surprise. He's got his man in Kai Havertz and it could be defining. Some will see it as a massive risk but if it pays off and Arsenal can unearth the potential Havertz showed at Leverkusen, this could be a masterstroke. What is happening though with the future of Eddie Nketiah? According to reports, Eddie Nketiah has been left unsettled by the impending arrival of Kai Havertz. Eddie's at a key stage in his career. He feels now he's proved that he can score goals at the highest level and the next step is going to be playing week in week out but the fact the club have decided to invest so heavily in another striker has left Eddie wondering if he really has a future at the club. There would certainly be no shortage of takers if he were to push for a move. Crystal Palace and West Ham are both near the front of the queue. Last year Nketiah could have left for free and there were so many teams after him. This is where the Arsenal contract comes in clutch. At 24 years of age Nketiah is about to enter the peak of his powers if he's able to play week in week out. I believe Nketiah could thrive in the Premier League for a mid-table Premier League side. In the current market though how much is Nketiah worth? under a long-term Arsenal contract and then you also have the English tax. Let's use the example of Dominic Solanke, a player Liverpool sold back in January 2019 for nearly £20 million. That was after he'd only scored one Premier League goal so think about Nketiah. Arsenal could easily demand upwards of £30 million. We've also got a future of Arsenal goalkeeper Alex Rodison. That is right he's still at the Emirates Stadium and he enjoyed a very decent loan spell in Turkey, starting 30 league games for Aliana Sport, making 3.6 saves per game. He has now become the first choice goalkeeper for Iceland, out of contract at Arsenal in 2024. According to Sacha Tavaleri, Belgian side and elector Ayanga Brunnison, Arsenal open to a sale and wants 1 million euros. We then have the future of following Balogun, after one of the best loan spells an Arsenal player has ever had 21 league goals in total. Balogun has made clear he doesn't want to go out alone again. Being a starter at Arsenal when you've got Gabriel Jesus, the arrival of Kai Havertz, it is going to be difficult. According to reports in the UK, Arsenal have slapped a 35 million pound asking price for following Balogun. RB Leipzig were thought to be keen by now looking at alternatives. Crystal Palace are also keen while AC and Inter Milan are other big admirers. You have to ask the question though, who are Arsenal better off keeping? Eddie and Ketia or following Balogun? A lot of fans will say Balogun but you can't disrespect Eddie. Last year in the absence of Gabriel Jesus, Eddie stepped up. He helped Arsenal stay top of the Premier League. But in Balogun you have a lot of potential and I would argue a slightly more decisive player in front of goal. PSV Eindhoven Xavi Simons is another player on Arsenal's radar having scored 19 league goals last year in the Eredivisie. At just 20 years of age in his first season he won the golden boot but as Richard Romano confirms Paris Saint-Germain have a buyback that clause for Xavi Simons and it's just 6 million euros. It can only be activated in July from the 1st to the 31st. The final decision is only up to the player. He's waiting to hear from PSG. Man United, Arsenal, Brighton, Spurs, Dortmund and Leipzig have asked to be informed. Xavi Simons has a lot of goal scoring potential and as you can see from his heat maps, he can play on the left hand side of midfield. An area where Arsenal are going to have open with the departure of Granit Xhaka. Simons is also a fantastic ball carrier, averaging 2.2 dribbles per game and their 60% success rate. Yes, the Eredivisie can be hit and miss, but you can't forget that the Arsenal captain Martin Odegaard actually had his first breakthrough year in that league. But having already signed Kai Havertz, with the likes of Martin Odegaard alongside Fabio Vieira and Emil smith -Rowe, is there any more space for attacking midfielder? The future of Jorginho has also been in doubt. The likes of Lazio in this area are looking for his signature. According to Nazar Cancela, Jorginho is ready to snub interest in Lazio to stay at Arsenal and is not keen to return to the Serie A. He has told his friends he's comfortable in London and is keen to make a success of his day at Arsenal. Mikel Arteta has been a fan of Jorginho for a very long time, so having signed him only in January, he used him over 10 times, he won't want to lose him this soon. If you watch Jorginho closely on the pitch, often you will see him commanding the other Arsenal players, telling them where to be. He's not the fastest or strongest, but instead he's very clever. Jorginho's experience, especially in the Champions League, is going to be vital next season. But what is happening with the future of Thomas Partey? According to James Bench, Al Nasser are willing to offer 30 million euros for Thomas Partey and offer him 10 million euros a year. Al Khalid wants a loan with an obligation to buy. Both clubs are accelerating for the Ghanaian and a bid is imminent. A move to Saudi Arabia makes the most sense in terms of finances. Arsenal would get a decent fee for a player 30 years of age in the final two years of his contract. But you also have another club in the race. Fabrizio Romano confirms via an exclusive. Juventus have also asked for information for Thomas Partey after Saudi clubs have also approached the midfielder. They are prepared to bid 40 million euros in three installments but nothing agreed yet on the player side. Juventus are informed but waiting for the future of Adrian Rabiot. Even though he's getting 
know that right now Thomas Partey is in the peak of his powers. Last year was arguably his best Arsenal season. Alongside Odegaard and Xhaka, he formed quite a midfield three. As you can see here in terms of the stats, Thomas Partey in the blue was imperative. From his dual winning ability to defensive work rate, especially in terms of final third entries and ball progression. When he's at his best, he's up there with the very top midfielders. Last year for many parts in the same debates of Rodri and Casemiro. You have to ask the question, is Thomas Partey too good of a player for Arsenal to be let go? Southampton's Romeo Lavia could be a potential replacement. And according to reports, Arsenal are in pole position to sign Romeo Lavia after he verbally agreed to sign for them. Lavia is expected to leave Southampton this summer and a fee of around £50 million would be enough to get a deal over the line. In terms of potential, Lavia makes a lot of sense. At 19 years of age, he's already a Belgium international. The likes of Kevin De Bruyne have spoken so highly of him. Many people in the game see Lavia as the future of Belgian football. But as Fabrizio Romano says, the intention at Arsenal is to focus on Declan Rice, to focus on closing the Kai Havertz deal, and then Jurian Timber. This is why the second midfielder is probably something that will come to their second step of the transfer window. With Granit Xhaka leaving and maybe Thomas Partey, Arsenal will be looking to sign two midfielders. I do wonder though, if Partey is allowed to leave, will they target a more established name alongside Declan Rice? Now moving on to the pursuit of Jurian Timber. Dutch international Jurian Timber makes so much sense. 22 years of age and is pre peak, able to play at centre back and at right back. Its on the ball ability is undeniable. Fabrizio Romano understands that Arsenal are advancing on a full agreement on personal terms with Jurian Timber. The player has accepted to join Arsenal. Negotiations will follow between Ajax and Arsenal in the next thousand days. A new bid is expected too. Yet another player convinced on the Arsenal project. Jurian Timber is a very selective person. This time last year, he could have gone to Man United but instead chose to stay at Ajax, wait for a season and find a better project. As Mike Verwey confirms, Timber has said from the very first moment that he only wants to leave Ajax for an absolute top club. Even Bayern Munich, who have not yet made an offer, are still waiting because Arsenal is his dream and priority. He doesn't listen at all to the other clubs. This is an example of the Arsenal pool back in the Champions League with one of the best young teams in the world. You look at Bukayo Saka and how Mikel Arteta has coached him into a potential superstar. Players outside of Arsenal see that and they want to be a part of it. As Fabrizio Romano confirms, it's only Arsenal for Jurian Timber at this stage. Waiting for a second proposal to be submitted soon, there's a clear reason why Mikel Arteta has identified Timber as his prime target. According to Graham Bailey, Arsenal view Timber as a player who can operate in a similar fashion to the versatile Alexander Zinchenko. The plan is to use Timber on the right hand side. The plan would be to use Timber on the right hand side of the defence and have him mirror Sinchenko. Jurian Timber has elite technical security. There are very few defenders in the world that have his level of composure under pressure the ability to play out of the back and always pick the right pass. Next year, Arsenal want to be as unpredictable as possible. Having seen the impact of Zinchenko on the left-hand side, having that ability to also invert on the right-hand side will take Arsenal to the next level. According to Mike Verway, Ajax wants 60 million euros for Jurian Timber, but the expectation is that a deal will be agreed between 40 to 50 million euros. Ajax and Arsenal are negotiating. Arsenal have already made their first offer. They have laid a lot of groundworks behind the scenes. And as Fabrizio Romano confirms, Arsenal are preparing a second for Jurian Timber. That will be submitted soon, crucial step after a green light from the player. Arteta has already approved Timber as a priority target for this window. Arsenal need to be quick here because there are other teams that also have interest. The likes of Bayern Munich are looking at the player. Florian Plattenberg confirms, Jurian Timber is on the verge of joining Arsenal. Bayern is still not involved at this stage. The player wants to join Arsenal. Verbal agreement is done. All depends on a second official offer now. Agreement is expected between 40 to 45 million euro transfer fee, plus bonuses payments. For that sort of price tag in the current market of inflation, it would be a tremendous deal. The future of Arsenal target Ilke Gundogan has been decided. As Fabrizio Romano confirms, Ilke Gundogan to Barcelona, here we go. Gundogan has agreed a two-year deal valid until June 2025, with an option for a further year. This was always going to be the likely scenario. Having won a treble with Man City, Gundogan had proven himself in the Premier League. With Gundogan leaving Man City though, they are looking for replacements and that's where of course you have the future of Arsenal's prime target Declan Rice. David Ornstein changed the game saying that Man City were expected to submit an offer for West Ham's Declan Rice. They have serious interest in recruiting the 24-year-old and he's anticipated a formal bid will be lodged soon to rival Arsenal for the signing. QV Arsenal fans starting to panic, the meltdown's beginning. Jean-Luc Di Marzio made it even worse when he claimed Man City were advancing in talks with West Ham to sign Declan Rice. Then things started to cool down. According to the reliable ex-West Ham employee, 
we can confirm that Man City held talks with West Ham over the sale of Declan Rice, but did not lodge an official bid. It was made very clear that Declan Rice really favours a move to Arsenal over the two. The main factor is Mikel Arteta. So far, there has been no Man City offer, but things can change. This reminds me a lot of the transfer saga of Virgil van Dijk back in 2018. Wanted by both City and Liverpool, he chose to go to Anfield because he was convinced by Jurgen Klopp. When you've got a top player like Declan Rice, of course Man City will have interest. According to Jacob Steinberg, Declan Rice remains keen on joining Arsenal, despite of Man City's intention to bid for him. That's the key part that all the reliable UK sources keep saying. Rice still prefers Arsenal. According to Broadcast Moose, he still expects Declan Rice to join Arsenal, mainly due to him being an undisputed starter. Arsenal, of course, have made two offers, both have been rejected. But according to Sammy Mockbell, West Ham are bracing themselves for Arsenal's third bid for Declan Rice, a £100 million offer, which they believe is now imminent. Even Fabrizio Romano says, Arsenal have confirmed to West Ham their plan to submit one more bid for Declan Rice. The most important part of the third offer though is going to be the payment structure, and this is where West Ham are making it difficult. According to Darren Arsenal, they are demanding £100 million for Declan Rice, and want £50 million now and £50 million next July. In the current market, apart from release clauses, two instalments is not very normal. Often teams will give you three full windows, but West Ham want to make things difficult, and Arsenal will need to be sensible. As Fabrizio Romano says, one crucial point to the story is Mikel Arteta. Arteta is pushing at his best level to sign Rice, but it doesn't depend on him, but it depends on the owners and how much they want to spend on the deal. But Arteta is trying his best, he is really pushing. Every single window, Mikel Arteta has his prime targets and often Arsenal have failed to get them. From Dusan Vlavic to Mikhailo Madrid, it's now time for the Arsenal owners and the Arsenal board to get him his superstar signing. A player that according to reports, Arteta sees as a future Arsenal captain. Now moving on to the other Arsenal news today and starting off with the shining Emil smith -Rowe. In England's first game of the Under-21 European Championships, ESR came off the bench and scored in the 90th minute to help England to a 2-0 victory. A massive goal in so many ways, not only to seal the points, but also in terms of confidence. That is ESR's second goal in over the space of a year. Both have come for his country and this tournament is the prime time for ESR to recapture his form. Now let's talk about transfer values. In the latest transfer market ratings, Arsenal have moved above the likes of Real Madrid, Barcelona, PSG, Bayern and Chelsea into second place behind only Man City. Rated at nearly £1 billion, a sign of what Arsenal have. The value of our young superstars is undeniable. The key part here is the contracts. Having secured their futures, their values are automatically going to be higher. And that's before the confirmation of William Saliba. Arsenal have something special in the making, but now is a prime time to capitalise. Other teams have been here in the past. Spurs are the prime example of 16-17. The likes of Harry Kane, Deli Ali, Hyung Min Son. But where they fail to invest, Arsenal need to do things differently. That is why this window, the early business, the signing of Kai Havertz, and the potential arrivals of Julian Timber and Declan is Arsenal making that statement that they are serious and they are here to stay. But that is the video there and there so hopefully you guys have enjoyed. If you have don't forget to smash a like and also subscribe to the channel if you are new. If you want to follow your boy on all of his social medias then the links are down below in the description. But that was the latest episode of the Transfers FC. Arsenal are making things happen. Verbal agreements are there but it's now time to make some official agreements. Jurian Timber and Declan Rice on the radar. Let's see what happens next so stay tuned and I'll see you next time. Take Take care in a bit.